Some of the best money I ever made in my 48 years of trucking was hauling straight bore tanker. Let me explain to you now exactly what straight bore tanker is and what that kind of work involves. Are you tired of hopping from carrier to carrier, looking for a good one to work with? You're looking for a home that you want to stay at? Check out GP Transco. They're a mid-sized carrier out of Joliet, Illinois. They're first-year people. Drivers make eighty dollars to $90,000 a year. They are an honest, transparent company. They haul contract freight, so they're busy year-round. Check them out at gptransco.com. Now, there are many types of tankers on the road, but straight bore tankers are the smaller cylindrical, usually stainless steel trailers that you see, and they haul chemical products and food grade products. And they're called straight bore tankers because they're completely hollow inside. There are no baffle systems inside the trailer to prevent liquid from sloshing back and forth. Now, they eliminate these baffles in these straight bore tankers when hauling food grade and chemical because they don't want any contamination between products in the, in the tanker, in the, in the products that they're hauling. So on a baffle system, the baffles are large plates that are basically welded into, into place to prevent slosh in say a gas or a diesel tanker. But the welds can collect product that's very difficult to wash out, it gets trapped in there, and that can be a form of contamination for the next product that they want to load. Uh, contamination is such an issue in food grade tankers and chemical tankers that usually they put people right inside the trailer. They lower them down through the dome on the roof and have them hand scrub those trailers. And it can be anywhere from a four to a 12 hour process to get one of those things clean, but it's all because they're totally concerned with contamination of the product. Now, because there are no baffles, the product can move freely back and forth inside the trailer and that creates slosh or surge. And the problem with that is, if the stuff is heavy, and you, it usually is, and the, the heavier it is, the lower it is in the trailer, of course, because you can't exceed your gross. So you get a massive amount of slosh in a really heavy product because it's not full to the top. So it makes shifting very difficult. So what happens is, you'll put your foot on the clutch or put your foot on the brake, all the product will slosh forward, hit the front wall of the trailer, and then start to move back. And it's at that point, then, when the pressure's off, that you've got to pick up or drop your next gear so that's not interfering with the gear change and then accelerate or brake slowly to try to eliminate that motion of the slosh. Now, straight bore tanker work has proven to be very difficult and very tough on automatic transmissions. I knew one fella that had a brand new Volvo automatic and he went through eight transmissions hauling chemical straight bore tankers in one year. Eight transmissions and finally Volvo said, it's the product you're hauling, we're not gonna warranty another transmission again. Automatics are not meant for this and the guy ended up having to trade his truck. And that was, you know, that's a lot of money down the drain but automatics and straight bore tankers do not get along. So there are some serious advantages to hauling straight bore tanks and particularly if you're an owner operator. They don't catch a lot of wind. They're low wind resistance, so generally you get really good fuel mileage with one of these tanks. They don't get crosswind, and they're not affected by crosswind. So if you're crossing Wyoming, for instance, it's not a big deal because the wind just wraps itself around the tank. And that's nice. There's no, there's no sway from a big crosswind. There is an awful lot of empty miles in tanker work, so that again ups your fuel mileage when you're running empty. But let me throw a cautionary note in there. If you sign on with a tanker company, make sure you're getting paid mileage, all your mileage, because you don't want to work percentage for a tanker company when they run you 2,000 miles empty fairly consistently. And when I was with this carrier that was hauling uh, chemicals, I ran empty to, from Portland to Louisiana more than a couple of times. So. That's an awful lot of empty miles. You want to make sure you're getting paid for all of that and not work on percentage. Generally, tanker work is very well coordinated. There is not a lot of sitting and waiting time. There is an appointment to load, an appointment to unload. There's no one else that's going to cut into your appointment time. You're given plenty of time to make your appointments. There's plenty of time to eat and sleep and, and rest and get there on time, even in bad weather, because one thing tanker companies do not want 
is the liability of a rollover. So generally they're a very safe operation and they give you plenty of time to get there. When you're there, you're paid for all your time. There's no free two hours here, free two hours there. It's all paid time and that's important these days. When I first started tanker work, it was the first time I'd ever had to install an electronic ELD in my truck. And I was worried because I thought the restricted hours are going to hurt my income. But tanker work paid so well that I found that I made very good money in spite of the fact that I was held solidly to the hours of service. Another plus for this type of tanker work is virtually all the customers in the refineries will scale you in and out. And that's how they get an idea of how much product they've loaded exactly on your trailer. So if they've overloaded you and when they scale you, you're overweight, they generally just won't even release you from the yard. They'll send you back and make you drain off a little bit. You're getting paid for that time. And you'll never have to worry about running illegally or overweight when you're doing chemical or food grade tanker. Now, there are a couple of downsides, as you might imagine, to hauling these type of tankers. Number one is, if it's a chemical tanker, those can be placarded loads, and you've got to ensure that the placarding is correct. And even when they're empty, before you get the thing washed out, you've got to leave those placards on because you can put, get pulled over. Even when you're empty, show them their, your paperwork. And if you had hazmat on, those placards still better be on the trailer until you can show them a washout ticket. So that's, that's something you've really got to watch. Not so much with food grade, but with chemical tankers. And generally, chemical tankers pay the best. Food grade tankers pay really well. Chemical tankers is where the serious money is. Let's talk about some of the special equipment that you'll need to haul straight board tankers. Now specifically, this is for owner operators because this may be an expense that you'll have to, money you'll have to lay out to be able to haul these tankers. So the first one I want to tell you about is the fifth wheel setup, the legs. One of the first things you'll need is to incorporate a set of high risers or high legs on your fifth wheel. This is because you need the product to drain to the back of the trailer. So you need maximum height on the fifth wheel. These are the risers here and generally you can run them between 6 and 10 inches higher than a standard fifth wheel. A kit for one of these is about $1,000 but it's money you've got to spend because it'll make your weight distribute properly and it'll help drain that tank so you don't have any heel. Now you're probably wondering what heel is. Heel is liquid leftover product in the trailer that hasn't come off when you've unloaded. And you don't want this. You need the tank to be dry because if you've got heel or product left over and then go to the tank wash, the tank wash will charge you to remove and get rid of this heel. So you do not want any heel. You want to make sure that the product is well out of the trailer and the trailer is almost bone dry. And if you have to stick your head in the dome, if you can do that with the right products to make sure it's empty, do that. Check through the dome whenever possible. So let's talk about what owner operators are going to need that won't be provided by the carrier to unload these tanks. Now generally there are two accepted methods. You need a liquid pump first of all and a liquid pump is exactly what it sounds like. You open the dome at the top of the trailer so there's airflow, hook a hose to the trailer, run it through a pump, pump it out through a line and into the compartment the customer wants it. Now the problem with li liquid pumps is that you've got to wash them out every time after you use them because you don't want contamination in the pump and sometimes they can seize up. And you've got to remember to open that dome cover when you're using the pump because if you have that dome cover clothed, it can suck in the sides of the trailer and you'll right off the trailer and you don't want that. You don't want to be buying them a new trailer. Now if you're going to pump food grade, those things run, those food grade pumps can run about $10,000 a piece because they have to be stainless steel. So that's very expensive. Now the other method of unloading straight bore tankers is using a compressor. A compressor can run you $5,000. This time to unload with a compressor, you need, leave the, uh, you need the dome closed up top, you pressurize the tank, the trailer, and then you blow the product off through a hose into the compartment that the customer wants it. So between a liquid pump and a compressor, there's a pretty fair investment right there. Now let me tell you something else as an owner operator they may ask you to invest in, and that's in transit heat. Now I investigated this pretty carefully before doing it to my truck, and I decided not to do it. 
But what it is, is there are coolant lines that run through the trailer to keep your product from freezing. The problem is that they want you to hook them up to the coolant lines on your engine and run them through a couple of hoses back to the trailer. Now, you can snag a line between the truck and the trailer and lose all your coolant, but the worst thing is that the pumps on your engine are not designed to circulate coolant that distance. They are designed to circulate coolant within your engine block. So you're straining the heck out of them if you ask them to, to circulate it through the trailer. I didn't find that it paid particularly well. I didn't find I lost uh, very many loads because I didn't have in-transit heat. It's an investment that I chose not to make because of the problems associated with it. Now generally, refineries and customers will want to do the unloading and loading themselves. They'll have you operate the pump or the compressor, but they'll keep track of the lines and the valves and everything like that because uh, they want to eliminate any sort of liability because if you get a spill, especially a hazmat spill, it's a real serious problem for these companies and th they try to avoid it at all costs. So they will have trained personnel waiting and they will unload or load the trailer as it needs be and generally the driver just sits in the cab and waits while while the refineries and customers load and unload these products it's it's serious stuff and you don't want to lose a hazmat load for instance in fact this is the type of work that i would recommend older slower more cautious guys to to take on because you can't have someone that's in a hurry all the time and rushing through these procedures to unload a trailer or take it down the highway. You've got to have a guy that slows down in corners, anticipates the surge onto the sidewall in a tight corner. It's not for the faint of heart. I recommend this type of work more for experienced drivers. Dollar for dollar, mile for mile, my time hauling chemical tankers paid some of the best money I ever made in my 48 years. But part of what they were paying for was my experience and my, my cautiousness and skill as I drove. They'll pay top dollar, even with an ELD, restricting my hours of service, I made very good money hauling chemical tank. One of the things that you'll learn if you're hauling chemical tank is the fact that a lot of them are top loading racks. You'll go into a refinery and there will be safety racks and loading racks and they, they generally hang fairly low. So guys with tall stacks like myself have to be very careful and most guys that own their own trucks that haul chemical tanks pretty much chop the stacks right down to the level of the bunk so they're not interfering with this stuff all the time and getting hung up on the racks so as, as a result owner operators that run chemical tank tend to have very low tractor units and they get used to the fact that clearance isn't usually a problem for them so I was with this carrier hauling chemical tank and they had an old guy there, his name was Spencer. He was a really nice guy, he'd been there for years, very experienced guy, but he was lost in uh, Pennsylvania one night following the GPS. He was tired, it was late at night, it was one or two o'clock in the morning. And Pennsylvania is full of tunnels, as you know. So he came across a tunnel on this road while he was looking for the customer, didn't think a whole lot about it, drove into the tunnel because he knew his truck was low. This tunnel, was lower than his truck. He shaved the roof off the Volvo and he shaved the crow's nest right off the trailer. And the crow's nest is the part that houses around the dome, the highest part of that trailer. So he rode off the truck and he rode off the trailer and got wedged in this small tunnel in Pennsylvania. And you know, it was an awful thing. It, it was an expensive thing. It, it ruined him financially at the end of the day. But it just shows you what can happen when you're not paying attention. Take care, keep the rubber side down, stay safe out there and pay attention when you're driving. I'll see you on the back home.